Thank you so much. Thank you, Governor Schwarzenegger, for bringing us all together and for your decades of leadership in the state of California, and just as importantly, working across borders to save the planet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, President uh, van der Bellen, for once again hosting the Austrian World Summit and elevating the importance of environmental action to the world uh, stage. Thank you for doing that. I want to thank Secretary General Guterres and Executive Vice President Seskovich, my good friend, for leading the change globally and here in Europe for a better future. We're coming together at a moment when the realities of the climate crisis have never been clearer and our ability to address those realities has never been greater. 2023, of course, was the hottest year on record. July of 2023 was the hottest month on record. And every month since has been the hottest uh, ever recorded on the, uh, on the planet. Experts say 2024 is on track to be even hotter than last year. And it's already having profound consequences around the world, and especially for the most vulnerable communities. As the president noted, this is not just about the weather, it's about people. When Panama is relocating indigenous families to the mainland from the first island to be permanently evacuated due to sea level rise, when flooding in Brazil kills more than 150 police, people and displaces 500,000, when the Philippines closes its schools because of extreme heat, when the UAE experiences its heaviest rainfall in 75 years, when scores of people this week are dying on the Hajj uh, because of temperatures of 45 degrees C uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, when Zimbabwe declares a statement of emergency because drought has de decimated this season's harvest, and more than 100 patients at a hospital in Mali during a scorching heat wave have died, when nearly 80% of the United States population is under heat warnings because we're experiencing temperatures above 32 degrees Celsius this week. Cases of Lyme disease, malaria, and dengue are increasing across the globe. When all these disasters are happening, we know something is terribly wrong with our planet. The string of calamities is no fluke. It is the climate crisis, and it's costing us big. In 2022, climate disasters cost the United States more than $180 billion. Last year, we saw a record number of extreme weather events costing more than a billion dollars. Globally, extreme weather events are costing $391 million every day on average, according to an October 2023 study. Meanwhile, our collective emissions keep rising, reaching a record level last year. It's true that we've made progress since Paris, and I want to applaud the work of the people in this room for helping accelerate that progress. But the math is not yet adding up. We still have a lot of work to do to ensure a safe future for humanity, and we have to move fast and at scale. I like to quote the IPCC in their 2018 report on 1.5 degrees C. We need a transformation of the global economy on a size and scale that's never occurred in human history. That's a tall order, but one we can accomplish. But we have to catalyze that transformation. And to do that, President Biden and Vice President Harris have set a target to cut U.S. emissions by 50 to 52 percent below 2005 levels by 2030. To back that up that goal with action, they passed the Inflation Reduction Act, the largest investment in clean energy and climate action in history. That law is slashing emissions across power, transportation, buildings, industry, agriculture, and forestry. In the United States, we got pretty good at figuring how to stop projects, as the governor noted. Now we need to get really good at building things. We're unleashing a clean energy boom in America that's boosting innovation and lowering costs, which helps speed deployment on a range of new clean technologies, not just in America, but across the globe. And it's lifting up low-income communities and places traditionally dependent on fossil fuel industries while creating good-paying union jobs. 
President Biden's clean energy agenda is moving us forward. So is Europe's leadership on climate. I applaud the work of President von der Leyen and Executive uh, Vice President Sefcovic and so many others in the room on the European Green Deal, which is showing the world that this continent is committed to climate action in line with science, mobilizing public and private investment to accelerate the transition and prioritizing workers and underserved communities. Here in Austria, 87% of electricity came from clean energy sources last year, making it Europe's second cleanest power sector, second only to Luxembourg. The people in this room are moving us forward in our fight to stave off the worst effects of climate change, but we should make no mistake. We're up against others who would rather take us backward, forces that would rather preserve subsidies for fossil fuel companies instead of lowering costs for hardworking families by improving access to clean energy. They would rather make it harder to invest in sustainable industries instead of unleashing the catalytic power of the private sector for clean energy. They'd prefer to strip back our historic climate laws instead of working on the next ones. They'd rather take us backwards and subject hardworking people, especially to the most vulnerable, to fewer jobs, to higher costs, to poorer health, and to less opportunity. We have to reject that vision. Instead, we have to accelerate our progress, heighten our ambition, scale our efforts every single year in the decades to come. And we must march forward to a cleaner, safer, healthier future, one that leaves no country and no community behind. And that's also why President Biden is committed to in increase our international financial commitment to $11 billion a year by this year, with $3 billion focused on adaptation. But we recognize that combating the climate crisis requires not billions, but trillions of dollars, and that a majority of those funds need to help the most vulnerable communities. That's why the United States strongly supports the evolution agenda at the multilateral development banks, which must continue to be enemies engines, excuse me, must continue to be engines of global climate finance. We're also pushing for innovative use of guarantees, equity, and blended finance vehicles to unlock more private sector investment in climate solutions, as the uh, Secretary General said. And this year, as a global community, we have to design a collective finance goal that scales the impact of the Paris Agreement and brings together contributors from every corner of the globe, mobilizes all sources of public, private, and philanthropic finance. We know a future is possible where we protect both people and planet, where our kids breathe clean air and drink clean water, where our workers earn a living forging our clean energy economy, and where our communities that have often been left out and left behind are now leading the way. We're on our way there. We've got policy on the books that are moving us in the right directions. Now we have to go faster, and we have to do it by expanding our coalition, bringing all communities along, and tackling any challenge that can slow us down. Together we can get it done, and I want to thank you for inviting me to be here, and I look forward to our discussions, Governor. Thank you. But Nadia, Mr. John Podesta, bring in the heat right there on the climate issues. Let him hear it, ladies and gentlemen.